everyone. Welcome to Strength for Today with your host here, Eric Dykstra. Today, I'm going to share a story in Michelle and I's life about a time where we experienced Jesus as wonderful counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, and an everlasting father. Again, these were scriptures we talked about last week from Isaiah 9 that the prophet Isaiah spoke about who Jesus would be. And I had made the statement that God just doesn't want us to know about who he is. He wants us to actually experience these qualities so that we can become those qualities to the world around us. And then we're going to dive into Luke chapter 2, the fulfillment of that prophetic statement that Isaiah made 700 years before the birth of Jesus and what that means, because there's some incredible, amazing things about Luke chapter 1 and Luke chapter 2 that we observe about who Jesus is and what kind of strength it can provide for our daily lives. So again, thanks for being present today. I'm excited for what God has, and I really believe what's on his heart is to strengthen you uh, in terms of your thinking, in terms of experiencing his strength through the way you live and respond to the circumstances around you today. So let me just share a story from uh, Michelle and I's life that happened several years ago when we were living in Colorado. And again, for those of you who maybe don't know, Michelle is my wife. And it was a time in our lives where after we'd had our first child, our daughter, um, we went about a year and a half before we actually had our second child. And I know for some of you, maybe you've experienced that. Um, others might experience it, you know, in the future if you're looking to have children. But this was an extremely difficult season because we had been praying and we brought this before the Lord about how many children, you know, was on his heart for us to have. And we had really felt that the Lord had spoken to us about having three children. And after our first, here we are a year and a half later of trying and not being able to have a child. And while I was on staff at the time with a Christian nonprofit organization called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and we did these quarterly prayer and fasting retreats. And really what that was is our entire staff from the state uh, went up to this place in the mountains and really just sought the Lord. It was a time of encouragement. It was a time of fellowship of celebrating the victories of what we had seen God do in the schools and in coaches' lives. And I can remember uh, anticipating this one in particular because it was about an hour and 20 minute drive. And a lot of times what I would do to prepare myself was just listen to worship music, uh, pray, ask things of the Lord, and just listen during that drive. And I can remember this anticipation of something that God was going to do, you know, because he always showed up in incredible ways. And so here it had been a year and a half. And for Michelle and I, you know, we really pulled on the counsel and the comfort uh, through the Holy Spirit, much like it talked about in Isaiah chapter nine. And there were so many times during that year and a half where the Lord himself was our counselor and we had to draw on his strength in that time because there was a lot of moments where we got discouraged where things seemed hopeless. But every time we came to him for our counsel, there was this sense of, of comfort and strength that would arise in us because we knew that the Lord is faithful to his word. And so there were moments where we had to continue to believe and believe that he was going to be faithful and see his word come to pass in our lives. And so again, I, here I was going up uh, the mountain and I just felt that there was this strong sense that the Lord wanted to release this gift that he had spoken to us uh, so many years ago in terms of our second child. And there was this great anticipation. So when we got up there, I can remember for the first day, just being extremely blessed by the level of encouragement, the excitement, the time of prayer, the worship we did, the time in the word, the teaching. I don't exactly remember what all was taught that day, but then the next day we woke up, had breakfast together. And the thing I loved about these retreats is that we often laid hands on each other and began to pray. And at the time I actually had a friend who was in the same state. 
uh, trying to have children and they couldn't get pregnant. And so there came the time when we began to pray and lay hands on each other. And what we had that day was we had a chair in the middle of the room and anybody who really had something that they wanted prayer for had the chance to come into the middle of that circle and they, uh, other brothers, uh, sisters in Christ came around us, laid hands on us. And there were just some incredible things that were happening. And I can remember about halfway through, uh, I just felt the Lord say, Eric, I want you to go and I want you to sit in that chair and I want to, you to just surrender having this child to me with your whole heart, with your whole mind, and I want to bless you. And so I sat in that chair and I felt the hands of all of our staff come around me and started to speak words over me. And uh, one, of the, one of the words that I can remember um, was, and I can't even remember the staff person's name, but you know they just said these simple words that, Eric, the Lord says to you that Michelle will have child and will have it soon. And as I heard that word spoken, it was as if the Lord was speaking through that individual and this peace just settled into my heart. And there was this sense of strength and joy that that word was not just from that person who spoke it, but it was from the Lord coming through and it rose up in my heart. And here's what I heard the Holy Spirit say, Eric, it's finished. You have my word. You can celebrate when you go home with Michelle that in the next month, you will have child and you will conceive your second child. And there was this sense of joy that rose up in that moment. And when I was, I can remember driving home that day, just feeling the peace of God settling in my heart. And so when I went home, I, I told Michelle this word and I could see in her eyes that it was a word that she received and we believed it. And sure enough, I, I believe it was the next month that we actually conceived and um, if, if for those of you who know us, uh, Caden is our second child. And so after a year and a half of having struggled and it's things seeming hopeless, things being discouraged, and even on days beginning to doubt the word that the Lord had spoken to us. And so this was, again, a time in our lives where we felt that strengthening um, and really a new level of faith. Because again, you can imagine uh, when, the, when the word of the Lord is fulfilled, it, it births greater faith and it gives you more confidence in the days ahead of what the Lord speaks is going to come to pass. And I know that can be a hard word because sometimes that's not the case and we're really believing and we just don't know why the Lord um, isn't, isn't fulfilling that. Um, and that can be a really tricky place to navigate. And I want to be sensitive to that. Maybe for some of you that, you know, are still believing for your word or haven't seen word maybe come to pass. So, yeah, and that was just a time in my life that I got to experience Isaiah 9 and what we're about to experience here in Luke chapter 2. So let's dive into Luke chapter 1 before we kind of get into Luke chapter 2. And again, this was a time when the angel of the Lord came to both Elizabeth and Mary. And this is amazing. Uh, hear what this says in Luke chapter one, when the Lord came to Elizabeth, it says, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. And I want you to hear that in your heart and the Lord saying that to you, greetings, favored one. If you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus, you are a favored one, and the Lord is with you today. When Elizabeth heard this, she was perplexed, and she began to consider it deeply in her heart about what does this mean? Because for some of us, honestly, the Lord being present with us is something that maybe seems distant, far off. Or there's this disillusionment of, is he really close with me? But taking the time, again, going back to one of the previous episodes about setting the Lord before us and believing that the Lord is an ever-present help in time of need. So Elizabeth had to come to that point in her life 
where she expected uh, that the Lord was with her. And I love what the Lord does here, the, the angel of the Lord. It says, do not be afraid, Mary. This was a time where the Lord had come to Mary and said, you will give birth to a child and you shall call him Jesus. And again, Mary had to ponder these things in her heart about what would it be like to, to give birth to Jesus who would become the Messiah, the one that saves his people and opens up a way, a new way to the Father. And so Mary really began to ponder this. And she even asked this question of how will this be? And I love what the angel of the Lord says to her. It says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. For that reason, the holy, pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. And then the angel of the Lord lets her know that your um that Elizabeth will also conceive at an old age. And so not only is the Lord coming to bless her, Mary, but the Lord has blessed Elizabeth, and which we know will give birth to John the Baptist, who will go and uh, be a forerunner for Jesus and his message, his kingdom coming into the world. And I love this response. Notice this, and this is really key and critical for us as well is that Mary's response is that she immediately ran to tell this good news to Elizabeth. And a lot of times, guys, when we hear something from the Lord, a lot of times it's such great news that, you know, it bursts this thing inside of us that we want to go and tell it to someone else. Because again, God is relational and he comes to us in relationship. And so our response a lot of times is we want to share that news relationally with those around us. When Elizabeth heard Mary's great news, it says her baby leapt inside of her with joy. And this is a great demonstration, again, tying back into the anticipation that we have of the Lord coming into the world, is that Jesus hadn't even been born yet. And he was creating a joyful response in another child that hadn't even come into the world and been born yet. And again, this is that anticipation. This is the reason we celebrate in Advent, because there's a hope that is coming. There is a hope that's current. There is a peace that is offered. There's a joy that is relational. And there's this sense of being loved and seen by the God of the universe and his willingness to share his son Jesus with us and to have him dwell within us. And then I love this. It says, when the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. And it says, Mary confidently believed the word that the angel of the Lord had spoken. Again, this is Elizabeth and Mary sharing joy and being glad to be together because they are going to be giving birth to individuals that would really change the course of history and opens up a way for us to be able to be reconciled and to connect with God at a new level. So let's look at Luke chapter two. It says that Jesus was actually born and the shepherds who were watching their flock, uh, suddenly stood before them uh, an angel of the Lord and flashed and shone around them. And they were terribly frightened. And again, these are shepherds that were looking for the birth of Jesus. And they had heard this great news. And so they make this journey and just like Mary began to go towards it. Um, Mary went to Elizabeth to tell her the good news the shepherds actually going to where Jesus was born, but they were terrified of the angel of the Lord. And the angel says to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good news and great joy, which will be for all people. All people includes you and I and anyone else who's listening to this. Good news and great joy. God's delight is to share his son Jesus 
that can make a difference, that can be the comforter, that can be the counselor, that can be the Prince of Peace in our lives if we're willing to give him that place. And again, if you go on to read chapter two, it says, and on earth, peace among men with whom he is well pleased. Again, God is well pleased with his son and he's placed his son internally within us as we enter into relationship with him. And so here's kind of where I wanted to end this episode for us today is that in the Old Testament, you had a visitation culture where God would come and he would visit and he would rest upon his people. But now through the birth of Jesus coming into the world and what he accomplished in his ministry and through the death and resurrection, and now he gave us the Holy Spirit that actually indwells us. So our bodies, Paul said this in Corinthians, is an actual temple, a place of connection and meeting that the Lord actually dwells within us. This whole story from Luke chapter one and two was the fulfillment of what Isaiah spoke 700 years before that time. <sighs> Take a breath. That is such good news that the God of the universe came in the form of a son, in form of a baby, and grew and sacrificed his son on our behalf so that we could experience peace on earth, that we have access to an eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ. So no longer is it a visitational culture. It is a habitational relationship now that we have permanent access with the Father through the Son in his work. And now the permanent ministry of the Holy Spirit giving us access to everything that God has for our lives. That's an incredible promise that brings us incredible hope. And I'll close with this thought. Going back to Luke chapter 2, it says that Mary pondered these things in her heart deeply. What would it be like to give birth, to have Jesus on the inside? I often spend a lot of time thinking about what Mary thought about and the sense of peace and joy that she felt. And I'm sure on those days too, there was a level of fear and anxiety about how other children, how other people were going to respond, knowing the suffering and the pain that her son would have to go through. And here's the question I'll end and you can give some time thinking about uh, before we have our next episode release. What is it like for you to have Jesus dwelling permanently, having your heart be the place of habitation and, and rest, that God is permanently there, wanting to be the wonderful counselor, wanting to be the Prince of Peace, wanting to show himself as mighty God in being an everlasting father? Because again, I know in my life and that story I shared at the beginning of this episode, he was all four of those things for me. And it marked my heart in a way that changed so many things and deepened my level of relationship and trust that I had of seeing him as an everlasting father. We have a God that is eternal, who gave so much so that we could have it all. So may you be filled with hope today. May, may you experience his joy and his love and his peace. May they settle in your heart. Join me next uh, episode here on Friday that's going to be released. I'm really excited about it. And we are going to do some exercises and activations about receiving the love of God and welcoming Emmanuel. God with you and hopefully going to be giving you some tools that are going to help enable you to experience God's strength for your daily life.